So let's talk about dating apps. I'm single, first of all. I haven't had much success in dating apps. So clearly, I'm an idiot. But I have some, I think, legitimate questions. I have some legitimate questions about this whole world of online dating and dating apps. And I want to ask these questions. I want to address my concerns in this episode. So, online dating has existed long before, you know, Tinder or Bumble and all those other apps. There have been many websites, for example, uh, <laughs> Match.com, eHarmony, etc. There are, these are like mainstream, OkCupid is big one. These are mainstream like dating apps or dating, online dating services before Tinder and Bumble. There are also like some niche niche date dating services for example jade.com and jd date jade.com and j date for jewish people shadi.com and g1 sati and bharat matrimony for arranged marriages in india then online online male brides male not in not male as in email male not the male <laughs> male female <laughs> but male brides in russia that there's also other websites like ashley madison for cheaters so online dating has existed long before smartphones but there have been social media websites as well before smartphones and a lot of people created the social media to meet new people not just for friendships but for love as well Facebook is a big, big platform when it comes to meeting new people for dating. Instagram is also there. But let's talk about Facebook first. Okay. You can find friends based on how many mutual friends you have on Facebook. You can see each other profiles, what you like and dislikes. Kind of like, kind of like a dating profile, you know, Facebook profile. You can see their thoughts and photos on their, uh, what it's called feed it goes by different name it was once upon a time it was called wall it was called timeline i don't know what it's called currently because I, I don't use facebook nowadays you can also see like uh you can also see that person completely they have also bios they have birthdays if you're into astrology and all that zodiac signs all that so you can send friend request to that person and you can start talking on chat features with on Facebook and uh, messenger Facebook messenger if you're using phone if you both like each other enough then you can set up a date and go on date Instagram same thing you can Instagram is basically dating profile with they have short bio their photos and they have captions on underneath those photos and with Instagram DMs you can start talking to people and then you can then you can meet extremely similar to modern dating apps but still many prefer prefer proper dating apps special dating apps so what are special dating apps or rather big three of dating apps first one is Tinder Tinder started in 2012 and it was called Matchbox. User had to click a green heart or red X to match or move on from a displayed photo. Tinder became first swiping app. You know all the swiping left and right. After Tinder was the first one to do that. After co-founder Jonathan Bardeen had inspiration while wiping the mirror in his bathroom. In 2015, Tinder introduced the ability to go back to rejected profiles via rewinding function, allowing users to correct mistaken actions. This was not prof this was not possible, and if once you reject someone, that person was gone. You cannot give like a second chance to that person, you know. 
in october 2015 tinder released super like feature worldwide this allows non paying users to super like one profile every 24 hours for free tinder plus users can use up to 5 super likes a day instead of swiping right users must swipe up or tap a blue star icon to super like a displayed fo- fo- profile tinder notifies users if they have been super liked by adding blue order to the profile of anyone who super liked them tinder has stated that super like makes it three times more likely for users to match than standard right swipes next story is bumble bumble is bumble has a interesting back story whitney wolf the founder of bumble was one of the co-founders or earlier employees of tinder she was forced to resign after like a nasty really nasty breakup with justin martin her xbox xbox <laughs> xbox and she she was subsequently harassed allegedly by justin however she sued tinder and won martin was forced to resign she received death threats and a lot of backlash from internet and that's why she not wanted nothing with dating now she wanted to create a female only social media network she met andre andreev founder of badu another dating online dating service andre m- met with whitney and tried to discuss various ideas with her when she told him about her plans andre successfully convinced her to turn it into a dating app they brought former two former employees from tinder chris gelzinski i think his name is right and that sound pronouncing and sara mick to help with the design of bumble whitney was was a feminist she found like the traditional and she still is feminist she found anyway she found the traditional approach of men asking out women somewhat bizarre she wanted to change that she with support from grace and sara and andre they launched bumble no bumble was a unique in that unlike traditional approach where men ask women women ask men this idea was inspired from sadie hawkins dance where women ask men for the date if both parties matched women must initiate the conversation this is one major like distinct wishing feature of bumble from tinder whitney also launched bumble bff a social media for women now bumble has become one of the biggest if not the biggest rival for tinder bumble is also in feud with tinder's parent company match group after they refused to be acquired by match group over like the swiping things apparently apparently there was a patent dispute or something so another one is hinge hinge markets itself as an app that's designed to be deleted this is a key this is very interesting it markets for people who want it caters to people who want long term relationships maybe even marriage hinge is preferred by younger demographics even though preference for long even though it has preference for long term relationships which which is you, what usually old people want you know unfortunately i'm, I'm not able to find me, that much data when it comes to hinge turning into successful relationships compared to others maybe it works maybe it doesn't so what's next only fans so all these apps become mainstream right but they couldn't handle the loneliness of the pandemic covid pandemic it was rough it was and it still is rough this pandemic forced people to stay away from other people a lot of people lost their jobs during pandemic the conditions were set for rise of personalized adult media platform and only fans was that platform many people who lost their jobs became became creators on only fans and started earning a lot more money than what they were earning from their previous jobs clearly there's a market for paid adult content even though many adult websites are free you know 
that's the that's the one success that baffles people about only fans that is the success of only fans so everything is free on the internet so why pay when it come why pay for only fans you know so like all those people are the people call them same or incels or whatever like why pay f- pay for content when when you can get it for free and it's legitimate con- legitimate thing you know why pay for content when you can get it for free but here's the thing about only fans only fans is personalized adult media platform so you can ask people ask your creator what you huh, how do i put this you can send a personalized media order f- to your favorite only fans creator so whatever whatever your kinks have whatever issues we have you can say that on you can ask only fans creator you cannot ask your porn stars about certain scenes you can ask only fans if they accept it they can give it to you so this is this is the one big feature that distinguishes only fans from traditional adult content personalization personalization of content that's the big feature of only fans remember that the uh, one of the main issues with only fans is that some creators are happily married or in a monogamous relationships and audience e- not so much audience they although they either want to be in relationship or they are already in relationship in someone and they want some personalized they want to express their sexuality or whatever so in a way like only fan creators are like digital girlfriend or boyfriend in fact that's how a lot of only fans creator describe themselves so are you really cheating with uh, with your partner with a digital boyfriend girlfriend i don't know what if you're single and you're paying money f- to only fans creator do you are you feeling led on do you fi- do you think you can get somewhere with your only fans creator are you see that's the that's the ethical complications that only fans introduces you don't know how to get around this there are too many answers there are too many perspectives there are too many approaches to see all these issues maybe i'm overthinking too much maybe i'm worrying too much but these are the issues that we need to address about only fans so what about issues what about the issues i have with online dating well number 1 first impressions are everything since you are swiping left and right on your profiles you know it is important that the profile that you create leaves a strong strong first impression first impressions of course they are not everything you may like someone you may have positive first impression of someone but later you find out find out that that person is a jerk or bitch you know you can rent rent a lamborghini if or audi or bmw shoot a f- few photos and post that on only fans well not only fans but dating apps of course th- you're going to attract gold diggers you know but but you're also lis- misleading some people about your financial status you're wasting their time of course people can be deceived about looks as well with makeup face filters photoshop etc even when you're not deceiving okay you think oh i'm being honest i'm i'm not de- trying to deceive someone you're trying to show your best self your best moments your best imp- you're trying to create a best impression so even though you're not trying to be deceiving in some way in really subtle ways you kind of are being a deceiver think of your think of your profile as an online ad of sorts for your profile for your dating profile sort of like a, like male brides <laughs> m a i l brides you're selling yourself online so if you're good at marketing yourself 
you are going to win the tinder game so that's the f- one issue i have with tinder and bumble and all those dating apps first impressions everything second issue is dehumanization or devaluation of humans you can see a lot more people on dating websites every day when compared to real life you may talk to like 50 people every day let's let's say you go out early in the morning you approach like 50 people every day you can get phone numbers of 10 people 20 people but you can swipe hundreds of profile within a few hours and message more people than you will be approach approaching more people this creates like a marketplace mentality where you want to swipe as many profiles as possible to increase your chance of getting dates guess what you are also being swiped left and right by hundreds of people so you you consider other people as options you know you're just an option to them as well this is this is what i'm tra- trying to address this is what i'm talking about when it comes to devaluation of humans this is what i'm trying to tell when i when i say de- dehumanize dating apps are like shopping mall where you can shop for people for dates you know that's the marketplace mentality call it ego entitlement i don't want to be an option i don't want to be like an option of thousands of people among thousands of people i want you to invest in me because i also also want to invest in you well not just financially but emotionally i am i have just too much of an ego to be just swipe left and right you know i want i want long term relationships i don't want just hookups i know that my value as a human being and i know other people's value as a human being we are not options we shouldn't be considered an options that's why the whole dating apps i'm not that's the big reason that i'm not a fan of online dating and dating apps that's the big reason another financial financials let's talk about people's success versus business success most dating services monetize and run their businesses through multiple ways some provide a free option and subscription option some of them provide a free option with ads like facebook for example facebook is a social network not not a dating service but yeah that's but you you can use facebook as a dating service so some free options show ads some services are subscription only either way it is in business interest to keep people using that service as long as possible whereas most people are going to be happy with long term relationships and monogamous relationships people in relationships they are going to move on from dating apps to use apple messages whatsapp or other messaging services like they do with family and friends that's one one other big issue i have with dating apps business interests are mostly at odds with the interests of people business interests say that you want to keep pe- people using that service as long as possible whether whether to show them ads whether to keep make them keep paying for the subscription so even if you, you you might be an employee of those dating services you and you go what that's rubbish we just want to connect people and make them happy sure sure but you're the venture capitalists and shareholders who are invested in your company or those dating companies they want maximum profits above everything else like all people who invest in everything investors that's what investors do they invest and they want maximum profits they want to increase their value of they want to increase their shareholder value increase the value of their shares so how, how can we align business interests with interests and happiness of users of customers of those services 
long term thinking shows that those interests are going to clash so these are the problems i have with online dating again i don't have much experience but some problems appear to me immediately from experience that i've had on dating apps while others have appeared in news here and there i'd love to talk to people who can talk me out of this and give me a legitimate opposite perspective yeah so that's why i'm not interested in online dating or dating apps even if i'm single thank you so much for listening